Right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well today, because of bad weather, I can't film with the MX-5 as planned, because the whole point of an MX-5 is to have the roof down, so you join me here in the office instead. As Bear Grylls would say, improvise, adapt, overcome. I thought for a change, rather than me driving around the beautiful High Peak area, I'd have a chat with you instead about cars that you would think would be reliable, but actually aren't. So here are the top six cars that you would think would be utterly reliable, dependable, and cheap to run, but actually are not. This might surprise you. I haven't gone off what car should I buy dot com's consumer reports or the JB Power Guide or Kelly's Blue Box or any of those things. This is just my own personal experience. So hopefully this video will prevent you falling for the same mistakes. So first up, we're heading to the land of the rising sun, surprisingly, and it's the Mazda 6 Sky Active Diesel, specifically the 2010 to 2014 model. Now they have an issue with the oil pickup pipe, which gets clogged and then starves the engine of oil. You know what you get when you turn the oil off, as the UAE will discover in a few years time. Absolutely nothing. Catastrophic engine damage is the answer. In addition to an oil-free engine, they also have timing chains that can stretch, DPFs that can block, turbos that can blow, so you are best to avoid that Skyactiv diesel engine. After 2014 they got better, but pre-2014 just buy something else. You're far better actually going for a Mazda 6 petrol, which are quieter, they're not too thirsty, and very reliable. They also sound much better because the diesel in half clattery. What I will say is though, my experience with most Mazda dealers has been pretty good. They're usually quite helpful and apologetic. Next up is the Nissan Qashqai, both new shape and old. Setting aside the fact that I don't like them because they're bought by people with absolutely zero imagination, they're also not reliable. Parts are way more expensive than you might expect, they rust, the tailgate handles fall off, the 1.2 and the 1.6 litre petrols have timing chain issues. I've seen these issues on low mileage examples with full history as well, so don't think I'm just talking about high mileage examples with no history. I recently had it on one that had done 32,000 miles with full Nissan service history. The diesels blow the turbos, again this is something that will happen even on low mileage examples. On top of that, heater blower motors are weak, window regulators are poor, they're just not great cars. If I were you I'd just buy a petrol Honda Civic instead. Or if you really must buy a crossover then perhaps a VW Tiguan or a Honda CRV or a petrol um, Toyota RAV4. Next up is number three. Now, Scotty Kilmer, if you're watching this, you're about to fall off your chair, because it is the Toyota RAV4 Mark III. Specifically, and crucially, only the diesel model. The petrols are pretty reliable. The diesel model from 2006 until 2012 has an issue with the oil pump, which can fail and then starve the engine of oil, and then you're looking at a £4,000 bill for a replacement engine. They also have issues with the head gaskets, so they'll overheat and you'll end up cooking your engine without knowing, and you'll be looking at a £2,000 bill to correct that. You'd expect better from Toyota. In fact, Toyota diesels in general aren't great. I've had loads of issues with Avensis diesels, Auris diesels, Yaris diesels. They're not great. Stick to petrol. Next up, number cuatro, is the Mini. Now, I know what you're thinking. Which Mini, Matt? There are loads of different models. Well, all of them. They're all unreliable. They're all garbage. The engines are rubbish. The gearboxes are rubbish. The manual gearbox is terribly unreliable. The synchros wear out, the bearings whine, and the automatic's even worse. In fact, you'd be better off using the automatic box as a bow tanker. It's absolute garbage. In addition to that, the electrics were obviously designed by a madman, and the power steering by somebody who was very bitter and vindictive. The timing chains go bad, they burn oil, they misfire. If you go for a diesel, the DPFs block, the turbos fail, EGRs get clogged. Don't get me wrong, the design of the new Mini from 2001 onwards is excellent. I think it's a really stylish little car, and they're great fun to drive when you want to go everywhere at 100 miles an hour. They stick to the road like nothing else. The Cooper S in particular is great fun, but if that doesn't appeal and you just want a stylish little car to pop to the shops in, then you'll hate it because everything on the Mini is hard work. From the moment you walk up to the door and try and open the door handle, everything's heavy and stiff. The steering's heavy, the clutch is heavy, the gear selector's heavy. You need the upper body strength of a caber thrower, but that isn't my main issue with it. You'd think because it's a cheap and cheerful Mini that's made for the masses, it's been around for 60 years, that it would be very reliable and cheap to repair. Well, it isn't. They're very complicated and they usually have to be taken to a mini specialist to be repaired, which involves a lot of open wallet surgery. In addition to that, parts are expensive and quite difficult to come by. Replacement parts often need coding to the car, which can add more expense. They're just an absolute nightmare. Next one, number five, the penultimate car on this list. A staple of the British roads, the Blue Oval. Specifically, the diesel models. Ford petrols are usually okay, but the diesels I would just avoid. The injectors will fail, the fuel pump will fail, which will send bits of swarf through the injectors and take them down too. I've had this happen loads of times with late low mileage just out of warranty Fords. It's totally unacceptable. Ford don't want to know, so it means me paying the £2,000 repair bill out of my eight or £900 profit margin, which takes some earning. 
In addition to the dodgy fuel pump and injectors, you'll have issues with the EGR valve, the DPF, and don't even get me started on those automatic power shift boxes. They are absolutely terrible. They're some of the least reliable gearboxes in the history of mankind. 15 or 20 years ago, Ford had quite a good reputation for building solid, dependable, no-frills cars for the masses, but they're still trading on that reputation today, and they don't deserve it. If I were you, I'd just buy a petrol Honda or Toyota instead. You won't go wrong, I promise. And it's not as if Ford diesels offer some supreme driving experience, because they don't. So you're best off avoiding them. The last car on this list is the humble Vauxhall Corsa. This is a go-to car for many a first-time buyer. Because Vauxhall made roughly one billion of them, you'd think they knew a thing or two about screwing a car together, wouldn't you? Well, no. Quite the opposite, actually. They sell them mainly because they offer a nothing down, 0% finance deal over 60 months. So they end up being bought by people who don't know a dipstick from a chapstick. That means they never get serviced, they get ran into the ground, and then after three or five years, they just fit for the scrapyard. I remember when I was 17 back in 2007, my mate bought a brand new Corsa D when they'd come out. Now that shape was much better than the Corsa C that it replaced, so he was quite excited about getting it. And after just two or three years and 30, 40,000 miles, he had loads of issues with it. The ECU melted. He had water leaks. The heater motor wouldn't work. One of the headlamps just refused to come on. It was an absolute pile of trash. To top it off, most Vauxhall dealers are about as clueless as the punters who buy them, and they're about as useful as an umbrella in a hurricane. In no particular order, you can expect the following issues with your Corsa. Timing chains, head gaskets, gearboxes, DPFs, the glove boxes always break, water leaks, power steering columns, heater resistors, blower motors, coil packs, spark plugs. Whew. Out of breath. The only time you'll see one of my forecore is when, on the rare occasion, I've found a nice one that's been looked after. Most of them are just absolute dross. In fact, kind of in Vauxhall's defence, it isn't just the Corsa. I'm going to generalise now. I think it's all Vauxhalls. They're all just garbage. If I were you, I'd just buy a petrol Mazda 3 or a Honda Civic or a Toyota Auris. It'll give you far less headaches. That's it then, guys. They were the first six cars that entered my head. You know the really frustrating part about this? Some of these manufacturers have been around for over a century. Wouldn't you think they'd be able to make a reliable car after all this time? I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I'm pretty sure they do it on purpose so that people keep swapping and changing their cars. Because if they made a really reliable car that lasted for 20 years, then I suppose they wouldn't have a business. But it's just frustrating from a consumer's point of view. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So cheers guys. I'll see you next time.